In this appeal, we are asked to determine whether the Supreme Court properly dismissed for failure to state a cause of action plaintiff's proposed class action, which is based upon a purported defect in the front seat backrests of certain vehicles. Plaintiffs commenced this proposed class action in June 1999 on behalf of themselves and all New York residents who own a class vehicle, which includes various specified automobiles manufactured by defendants. Between 1993 and 1998, the class as defined by plaintiffs is estimated at one million people and specifically excludes those individuals who allegedly suffered personal injuries as a result of the claimed defect. The defect is defined by the plaintiffs as a design utilizing a single recliner, which is a manually adjustable le lever that fixes the angle of the seat uh, backrest and which is heated, heated only on the outboard side of the front seats. Plaintiffs aver that the backrest as designed is unreasonably dangerous because it is unstable and susceptible to collapse in the event of a rear-end collision, in that a class vehicle is struck from the rear by another vehicle, the force of the occupant's body against the backrest of the seat can result in the rearward collapse of the backrest, which is which in turn can result in neck and back injuries, paraplegia, and even death. Plaintiffs further maintain that the seat defect was aggravated by certain additional design flaws and that defendants knew or should have known of the hazardous condition yet made a conscious and deliberate decision against implementing an improved design which would have included an additional mechanism on the inboard side of the seats. Plaintiffs continue that defendants knowingly and intentionally concealed that from the public the risk and harm from seat collapses and that as a result plaintiffs suffered economic loss in that the class vehicles and seats did not meet reasonable consumer expectations and posed an unreasonable risk of serious injury or death in the event of a rear-end collision. Plaintiffs maintain that class members were therefore compelled to incur the expense of alternate transportation or the expense of correcting the defect. Plaintiffs sought compensatory damages measured by the cost of correcting the defect not to exceed $5,000 for each class vehicle and interposed seven causes of action sounding in, respectively, negligence and strict liability. General Motors subsequently moved to dismiss the complaint for failure to state a cause of action and failure to state the fraud claims with sufficient particularity. The motion court, in an order entered on or about May 30th, 2000, granted the motions and dismissed the complaint in its entirety. Plaintiffs appeal and we now affirm. It is well established that in determining whether to grant a motion to dismiss based upon a failure to state a cause of action, the pleadings are to be afforded a liberal construction, and the court should accept as true the facts alleged in the complaint, accord plaintiff the benefit of every possible inference, and only determine whether the facts as alleged fit within any cognizable legal theory. Stated another way, the court's role in a motion to dismiss is limited to determining whether a cause of action, as stated, is within the four corners of the complaint, and not whether there is evidentiary support for the complaint. 
In view of the foregoing, and as the motion court correctly found, plaintiffs must plead actual injuries or damages resulting from defendant's conduct as an essential element of each of the first six causes of action. Certainly, in this case, the GBL section 349 and 350 Oswego Laboratories Local 211 Pension Fund versus Marine Midland Bank 85 New York 2nd 20 25 to 26 plaintiffs herein with regard to the issue of damages have as previously noted specifically excluded from the putative class all persons who have suffered personal injury as a result of the rearward collapse of a seat.